Welcome to part three on how to make a vibe edit on Premiere Pro. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to add transitions and effects. If you weren't paying attention or you just didn't watch part one, then you're going to be very confused when you open up Premiere and don't have the effects that I do. All right, so this is what I achieved last time. I'm going to go back to half quality because it's going to lag. So what I'm going to do is create an adjustment layer if you haven't already. So right click, new item, adjustment layer, OK place it above your first clip and extend. The first effect will be S shake. So under Sapphire distort onto the adjustment layer it goes, head back into effect controls. This is going to help us make a panning effect or like a wobble effect, if that makes sense. So just copy my settings. Frequency two, open up X shake, change the random to 16. Y shake, random 16. Tilt shake, so underneath tilt wave amp, set to 0.35. Now you should have a shake that looks like this. Perfect. Collapse this effect and search for S underscore flicker, if I can spell this one underneath Sapphire Time and copy my settings. 0.175 for the amplitude and a rand frequency of 22. Collapse this as well. And now we're going to add on S underscore blur mo curves. This one underneath Sapphire blur sharpen onto the adjustment layer. We're going to use this to make the zoom transition. So you want to keyframe the Z list at the start and set it to something like you can do 0.5 depending on where your character is. She's in the distance, so I could go even further. So 0.4 instead, head to your last frame and reset this back to one. In fact, change this to 1.1 instead. This might help us later on. So yeah, go for 1.1 instead of one and change the wrap X and Y to both reflect. Using Smoothify, you want to apply the graph that we used before. So that's not the one and it's not letting me select it. So if I just click away and then reselect, there you go. I'm going to hit go. This is the result. It's kind of hard to see because it is lagging. Sorry about that. Either way, that's looking perfect. So what I'm going to do is collapse this as well. If you want to apply it onto your second clip, you can just copy the adjustment layer over. So hold Alt on your keyboard, click and drag. However, your clip is probably going to be shorter or longer. So if it is shorter, you can just open up the blur mode curves and you can get rid of these keyframes here. So just hit the bin icon. And let's say the clip was this short. You can just move your keyframe back and then cut the adjustment layer reapply the graph. It's really that simple. I'm not going to do that because my clips are the exact same in terms of duration. So all I've done is just copy and paste. Next, we're going to create a blur effect. So you can either use Sapphire Blur. So if you have the Sapphire plugin, you can use that effect. Or you can use BCC Lens Blur OBS if you have the BCC plugin. I personally think it looks much better than Sapphire Blur, but it is completely up to you. So let's begin with Sapphire Blur. I'm going to add another adjustment layer. Search up S underscore Blur. Add it onto the new adjustment layer. Keyframe at the start to, let's go 50. And then about 5, 10, 15 frames ahead, I think. This might be a little too far ahead, but we'll see. Add another keyframe for zero. And what you want to do is change up the graph. So move this handle all the way up here so you can hold control just to lock it to this point in the corner and drag this one up here make sure nothing else has been selected so just the blur amount and hit go you may experience some lag unfortunately but that's just how it is so if that is the case i guess you could disable the other effects temporarily so you can see how the effect is looking so far so this is the blur now let's do it in reverse so head to your last frame and then head five frames back. Keyframe, so make sure this is zero, five frames ahead, and change this to 50. So all you need to do for the graph is move this all the way down here and hit go. So it's going to place these keyframes and it's going to look like this. Duplicate this over to your other clip and make any adjustments, just like we did before with the blur mode curves on the second adjustment layer. Here's how it looks at absolutely terrible resolution because I put it at half but at least you can see what the blur looks like. 
All right, now I'm going to try it with BCC Lens Blur OBS, which I think is the better alternative. So BCC Lens Blur OBS right here, add it on. The settings I use is sharper for the quality. Iris scale, let's go 25, I think. First, we need to increase the gamma actually. So let's go for 600. I just remembered it's going to look different if you have other effects below it. So because these are two different plugins that, you know, I think there's like a compatibility issue between them. I'm not too sure. So if I enable this layer, you can see the blur is going to look slightly different. Probably the worst example to pick because you can't see anything. But I'm just going to go for 25 for the iris scale. 5, 10, 15 frames ahead. Zero. And move this graph. I think it was up here. Hit go. This is the result if it's going to play. Repeat this for the end. So last frame, five frames back, keyframe to zero, five frames ahead. Before I add on the keyframe, have you noticed that for some reason there is motion blur? And I think it's because of this effect or any effect on top of these ones here. So uh, blur mode curves. I don't usually see any motion blur when I use this effect. So if I just hide the top layer, you can see there is a reflection. That's about it. But if I enable it, there is motion blur which is exactly how it's actually supposed to work because it's called blur motion curves, meaning motion blur. So it's like warp transform with motion blur. It, yeah, so I don't know why it does that, but hey, I'm not complaining. Anyways, back to this. So I'm going to set it to 25 and graph this again. Hit go. Duplicate this layer over to my other clip. I can also render this segment only. So I'm going to press I at the start, O at the end, head over to sequence, render into out. And here is the finished result. Wow, it looks much better than I thought. I think this looks better than my first attempt. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, that covers everything on how to make a vibe style edit on Premiere Pro. A very simple one. Thank you to my monthly supporters as always. And thank you for watching till the end. I'll see you next time. Peace.